A few weeks ago, I did a video on this channel having some fun and making light of the fact that James Ellsworth was one of the top merch sellers in WWE. Frankly, I thought it was funny on several different levels. The fact that this dude would actually be one of the top merch sellers in and of itself, I thought was funny, but I thought it was in part a sad indictment on the current state of the talent roster of the WWE. I thought it was a sad indictment of the state of the WWE product itself. I thought it was in part also a statement on how a lot of the fans are really rebelling against what the WWE is currently doing. Um, I thought it was also funny how a guy like James Ellsworth, in some ways, the story that he's involved with was a lot better than most of the rest of the roster. So, you know, it was funny to me. And it still is. It still is. And I think it's still funny how we're still growing strong with James Ellsworth on SmackDown and making him one of the featured attractions on that freaking show. <laughs> That's funny. You don't think it's funny? <laughs> I can't blame you. But you think it's a great thing? Huh? Whatever. More power to you. But I'm going to think about it my way. And I think it's freaking hilarious. Until we get to a certain point. And that is the point in time where I start to wonder if James Ellsworth is more important than AJ Styles. That's to be where it ceases to be funny any longer. Now, I've been an, a fan of AJ Styles for many years, going back to him being one of the TNA originals. You know, he was always one of those dudes that when I would plug in TNA, he was one of those people that I wanted to see. He was one of those people I felt like I had to see. I, in a lot of ways, more often than not, felt like I got my money's worth from AJ Styles, especially in the ring, when a lot of times the crap that he was involved with was just that TNA crap. So when a couple of years ago he left TNA and eventually made his way to WWE here in the past year plus, you know, I was excited. I'm like, I want to see. For so many years I've been wondering what would happen if AJ Styles ever went to WWE. Would they give him a chance? Would they give him the ball and let him run with it? Would they try to sit there and send a message? Would they sit there and fuck with him? Would they sit there and bury him? Would they sit there and give a reminder that TNA is always going to play second fiddle? You know, frankly, I didn't know. And frankly, a lot of you didn't know either. You know, we thought about dream matchups over the years, especially one that always came up was AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. Frankly, that's a matchup that I would still like to see at some point in time. But, you know, it was always what's going to happen if AJ Styles ever goes to WWE, and then we get that answer. And then we get that road to WrestleMania last year, and instead of making AJ Styles versus Chris Jericho a big, huge freaking deal, we give that match away several times before WrestleMania to where only ultimately Chris Jericho goes over AJ Styles. And once that happened, I'm not going to lie. You go from that to where he's losing at his first WrestleMania to then he's feuding with and losing to Roman Reigns. I'm sitting there and saying, oh, I know where this is going. And most people are not going to like <laughs> the path this is headed down. But then a funny thing happened along the way. All of a sudden, the WWE got behind AJ Styles and started to believe in AJ Styles a little bit. It gave him a chance to change his character in the WWE and let him take the ball and run with it. You could see early on they were trying to hide him. They were keeping him away from the microphone. They were trying to be selective in how they featured him. But man, you look at the evolution of AJ Styles in the WWE from January to now, and it's something to see. Now, granted, they are starting to fall into the old trick of you've got to make every heel a chicken shit coward. They're doing that crap with AJ Styles, too, and I don't particularly like it. But what I really don't particularly like is the way that they're featuring James Ellsworth so prominently and, and in such a big, important way. To me, James Ellsworth should be nothing more than a plot device for what's going on between Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles. But with the way things have been done in recent weeks and months, frankly, it's led up to the point where you've even got Dean Ambrose and James Ellsworth appearing on SportsCenter. It's getting to the point where Dean Ambrose and to a certain degree AJ Styles are a plot device for James Ellsworth. Now, is this a matter of James Ellsworth has actually gotten himself over and the WWE is surprisingly responding in kind? Is this the WWE trying to gr desperately grab for straws and they've got a little bit of a straw here so they're trying to stretch that plastic piece of shit as far as they possibly can and milk it and ultimately do what they do best, which is ruin it? I don't know. But I have a fundamental problem 
with a guy like James Ellsworth, who you know long term the company is not going to make a huge star of. You know long term you're not going to build your company around. You know long term that you're not going to have him as one of your building blocks. He could be a guy, and a James Ellsworth can have a spot. And no, this is not a vanilla midget, indie darling type of blast piece. But think about it. If you are running a big major wrestling corporation, as much as I'm not a fan of, let's say, a Finn Balor, at least Finn Balor has entrance and he has that body paint. You have two major foundational pieces to potentially make a huge star out of. James Ellsworth can be that every guy, that every man, and he can have a spot. But you're not going to get anywhere making, trying to make him one of the top stars of your company. You're just not. Because at the end of the day, people are going to look at him eventually and be like, that dude is boring as piss and he's supposed to be one of the best that they've got. I remember now why I haven't watched this crap for the past 10, 15, 20 years. At least you see a guy like a Finn Balor, similar in stature, what have you, similar in ring work, what have you. But there's more there. There is more that translates into potentially getting over on a national and international basis. I think he's more over internationally than he is nationally. But nonetheless, if you're going to give me a guy, I would much rather have a Finn Balor than a James Ellsworth. It's just that simple. But I have a real problem with taking a guy like AJ Styles, who is one of your hottest performers right now. Arguably, you could say he is your superstar of the year in a lot of ways. And putting him on the back burner for not your number one contender, but now James Ellsworth. There's something fundamentally wrong with the priorities here when this is happening. Like, let's, let's look at it this way. Just coming off a of Survivor Series, you've got James Ellsworth is the team mascot. That's fine. That is an appropriate role for him. And he interferes in the Raw versus SmackDown match. He helps get Braun Strowman eliminated. And then he gets wiped out and decimated by Braun Strowman. But lo and behold, and we lo and behold, and we talk about uh, the the writing and the storytelling, and some people talk about how James Ellsworth had a really good story. The fact that two days after he just got decimated and thrown off the stage by James Ellsworth, he's getting a ladder match for not only a WWE contract but a WWE World Championship shot in the future, and not really selling any of the ill effects of this massive beatdown he just suffered two days ago is ridiculous. We're giving James Ellsworth Superman treatment here. And all the while, we're using AJ Styles not to get AJ Styles over, not to help get Dean Ambrose over, but to try and get James Ellsworth over. Whether you always like the champion or not, whether it be a Seth Rollins or a Roman Reigns or a Kevin Owens or, you know, in this particular case, an AJ Styles, on that particular brand, I don't give a fuck who it is. As long as that person is the champion, they must always, always, always be featured in a way that they are the most important person on that show. This is not up for debate. This is the way it has to be. They must be the most important person. And this is where in recent years the WWE has really fallen off on this crap, is when John Cena didn't have the world title, they gave him, let's say, the United States Championship, and then they had him have that open challenge every week, and they featured the U.S. title not in a way that elevated its profile, but it elevated its profile and became more important than whoever happened to be the freaking world champion. And that's not how it should be. Because basically what you're saying is, is whatever belt John Cena had was the most important title, not the one that's the world title. It should be John Cena's here, but he wants to go after the world title. This guy's the world champion, so that might mean that he's better than John Cena. That's how you create a story. That's how you potentially draw money. God forbid anybody want to do that in the freaking business today. But now we're sitting there and making AJ Styles a cookie-cutter, chicken-shit, coward heel, not for some big and posing badass dude, but for James fucking Ellsworth. And now we're having AJ Styles, our WWE champion, the guy who technically has the number one belt in the company, losing ladder matches to James fucking Ellsworth. Potentially down the road, having to defend his title against James Ellsworth. Notice how everything comes back to James Ellsworth when I'm talking about it. Dean Ambrose is there on SmackDown, dressed up as the Mountain. I always get my man. 
And at the end of the day, he's coming out to try and help out James Ellsworth. Everything about this is all about James Ellsworth. It's not about AJ Styles. It's not about the WWE Championship. It's not even about the de facto number one contender, Dean Ambrose. It's about James Ellsworth. To the point where, indeed, the company has now made James Ellsworth more important than Dean Ambrose, and more importantly, AJ Styles, the freaking champion of arguably the Abe Show brand of the company. That's ridiculous. Especially when you're potentially looking at if they want to go there and they're trying to have some big feature WWE Championship match at the Royal Rumble, you could potentially have a AJ Styles defend the title against a John Cena or, for God's sakes, the fucking Undertaker. So in less than two months' time, we're potentially, potentially going to have to get to a point from where James Ellsworth serves as a great foil to AJ Styles to where AJ Styles is going to have to prepare himself to face the face that has run the place for the past decade, or arguably the greatest WWE superstar of all time in The Undertaker. This is what devalues top guys. This is what devalues championship belts. It's bad enough that Dean Ambrose and John, or AJ Styles have had a feud that's been running for a long time, and I'm ready for it to fucking be over. But now we've gotten to the point where it's not even the number one contender in theory, Dean Ambrose, that's the more important guy. Because even then you could kind of get away with that, especially if you're trying to position this guy to be the next champion, especially if you're trying to get him to carry the championship into WrestleMania and try to be a money-drawing champion. But right now AJ Styles is your champion, and you should be trying to make him a money-drawing champion because there is money to be made with AJ Styles. But there is not money to be made with AJ Styles as a champion if you keep undercutting him for the sake of fucking James Ellsworth. We're getting to, a, well, we've gotten to a really, really weird, stupid place in wrestling, especially in the WWE. Where the guy that comes with years of accolades and a huge, sizable fan base of his own is being undercut by a guy who's in a lot of ways just another ham and egger that happens to be benefiting from the spot and opportunity that he's been giving. Now, granted, he's making the most of it, and I applaud him for that, and more power to you, James Ellsworth. But at the end of the day, there has to come a point in time where we say enough is enough. This is the stupidity that hurts the product. This is the stupidity that prevents guys from becoming big money draws. This is the type of crap that devalues world championships. And for some reason, the WWE is doing this shit yet again. And it's just astounding to me. It's funny to me to see people are starting to tire of the James Ellsworth stuff now. Oh, no, 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 no! If you were down with it before, you best stay on that bandwagon as long as possible. No breaking your foot hopping off that bitch now! But it's just a shame that a guy like AJ Styles, arguably your superstar of the year, the top guy on your B show, which for a lot of people is actually the A show, is playing second fiddle to James Ellsworth. Unbelievable. And yes, it is a real, real problem.